Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 1. And in this lesson, we'll be looking at how you use all of the tools at your disposal to answer longer, more complex questions to do with triangles. We have a variety of rules that we can use to help us, and all of them need to be in the back of your mind. So if we had the triangle ABC, and then drew a perpendicular from A down to the base of the triangle, we have got Pythagoras' theorem, which we could use on either of these two right angle triangles. So for instance, x squared plus h squared will equal c squared in the left hand triangle. We've got standard right angle triangle geometry. So the sine of angle B will equal h over c. The cosine of B is x over c. The tangent of B is h divided by x. We've now learned the sine rule. If we consider the whole of triangle ABC, then A over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. Or we can write those three fractions the other way up. We have the cosine rule. Again, looking at the whole triangle, A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. Or we can rearrange that for the other letters B or C on the left-hand side. And we have two rules now for finding the area of a triangle. We can always just do half the base times by the vertical height as long as we know the base and the vertical height, so a half a times h. Or we can use the area is equal to a half a times b times the sine of the angle where a and b meet, a half a b sine c. Now we're just going to look at one example in this lesson, but it is a long example and quite a complex example, and it uses most of those rules. So example one, the plan of a field is shown below, the field has got two gates, one up here at B and one down here at D. First of all, we're asked to find the shortest distance between the two gates. Then we're asked to find the angle ADB, which will be the angle going from A down to D up to B, so the angle down there. And lastly, we're asked to work out the total area of the field. Okay, I'll let you have a go at doing the whole of this question yourself. So pause the video, have a go, and then come back to me again when you're ready. Okay, let's have a look at this. So first of all, part one, the shortest distance between the two gates. Well, that'll be the distance BD. At some point, we're gonna need to draw in BD just to make things a little bit easier. Now we've got two triangles. One on the left doesn't really have very much information. So it's unlikely we're going to be using that one. The one on the right, we know two lengths and we know an angle. I think where there's no right angle, so we can't use Pythagoras, we can't use standard trigonometry. The first thing I would always ask myself is, can I use the sine rule? Because the sine rule is easier to use. But to use the sine rule, you need to know at least one angle and its opposite side. We don't. We know that angle 45, but we don't know the opposite side. And we don't know either of these angles. So no, you can't use the sine rule. The only thing we have left is the cosine rule, which we can use. Because we know at one angle, we know the two sides where that, uh, that meet at that angle. And it's this opposite side, BD, that we want to find. So it is the cosine rule we'll be using. And we'll want this form. C is the length that we're trying to find. So C squared is equal to B squared plus D squared minus 2BD cos C. We know the length of B, that's 350. We know the length of D, that's 400. And we know the angle C, 45. We just put all of that into the formula and that will give us that. Using the calculator, that tidies up to 282,500. Take away this number. That gives us C squared is equal to 84,510. 0 0.101 and so on. Square rooting that gives us the length BD, which will be 290.7062 meters. Rounding that to three significant figures will give us BD is 291 meters. Okay, so we can now write in BD on the diagram. It is 291. And we're asked to find angle ADB. So the angle from A down to D up to B. Um, we don't have a right angle, so we're not using standard trig. 
However, we do know one angle and the opposite side. We're interested in finding this angle, and we do know the side opposite it. That means that we can use the sine rule. So the sine of angle A over A is equal to the sine of angle D over D. And I've chosen to have the angles on the top because it's the angle we're trying to find. It just makes things slightly easier. Always with the sine rule, you should know three of those things. If you don't, then you can't use the sine rule, at least not in the way you're intending to. Otherwise, you just substitute in the three things you know. So we get sine 34.5 divided by 291 is equal to sine D divided by 250. And that gives us sine D is equal to 250 times by sine 3045 divided by 291. Now on the calculator, I would not be using 291. If you remember when we worked out the length of this side, you actually got a, a very long decimal that just continued forever. And we rounded it to 291 to get the answer. What you should use when you do this calculation is the unrounded value for that number that you had on your calculator originally. You may need to work it out again. Anyway, that should give you sine D equals about 0.487, which gives you angle ADB is 29.1 degrees to three significant figures. We can now write in the angle, 29.1 degrees. And the last thing we're asked to do is find the area of the field. Well, there is no obvious way to work out the area of that sort of shape as a whole, but we can work out the area of the two triangles and add them together. The triangle on the right-hand side is the easiest one to do. The area formula requires us to know two sides in the included angle. And we know this side, we know this side, and we know the angle where they meet. So we can work out the area of the triangle BCD, which is a half times B times D times the sine of C. Those three things, we know all of them. So we've got a half times by 350, times by 400, times by the sine of 45. Put that in the calculator, and you get about 49,497. To find the area of the triangle on the left-hand side, we don't have two sides in an included angle. We know various sides, we know various angles. But um, we can't use this formula at the moment. To use that formula, you need to know two sides. You need to know the angle where those two sides meet. We know this side and this side, but we do not know the angle where they meet. However, it is easy to find that angle. We know both of these two, so we just do 180, take away those two, and that will give us angle ABD, which is 116.382 degrees. Now, having worked out that that's 116.382, we can use the sine or the area rule that uses sine, which is half times by this side, times by this side, times by the sine of this angle at B that we do now know. So putting all of those into the formula for the area of the triangle, we get that. That gives us, again, quite a long decimal. We've now got two areas we need to add together. For the time being, I'd keep them accurate. When you add those together, you get all of this. And then I would round the answer. And I think they asked for the answer to the nearest square meter. Yes, they did. So that'll be 82,000 and 51 meters squared to the nearest square meter. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson. Now, if you'd like to have a go at some very different questions, uh, these questions do vary a lot. When you've learned how to do one of them, it doesn't mean you can learn to do the next one. You really need to do as many of them as possible to get used to them. But anyway, if you've got the textbook, turn to page 120 and have a go at exercise 6E. Thank you very much for listening and cheerio.